get you um, yeah. just to have a seat here. If you like me. Can you take the handcuffs off? What's that? Can you take the handcuffs off? Um, <clears throat> as soon as um, the detective gets in here, Detective Flores, he can take those off for you. I think that's what he told you anyway, that he'd allow you to have your handcuffs off. I'm going to get you a bottle of water. Thank you. Any chance you can get my purse? Yeah, I'll get that from the house. Will they bring it to me? Um, it'll probably be putting your property. Just water for you. Do you want one for yourself? Um, yeah, I can get one. Anybody turn the heat up in here? Like, do you have a sweater that I can borrow or something? I don't have any sweaters. Um, I'll, see, I'll see if I can turn it off. It's hard to control the heat in this building. That's fine. I'm trying to lock myself in here. Yeah. <clears throat> so you remember me? Of course I do. <clears throat> well, I traveled all the way up here to come talk to you. Because... You know, I've been working on Travis's case ever since it happened, mm -hmm. okay, and I know exactly when it happened, when he was killed. I know a lot of details, and just recently we found quite a bit of evidence, and I'll discuss that with you. The main thing that I'm looking for, though, is answers on why certain things happened, why they went so far, and also to get your statements. Okay. <clears throat> um, a lot of details on this case that haven't been released to, to the public and not even to Travis's family. And those details are known only by us and the person who did it. Okay, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm here is because I believe that you know some of these details. Okay. And I think you can help us. I would love to help you in any way that I can. Um, because we're here at the police department, the sheriff's department here in, uh, was it Siskiyou County? Siskiyou. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, and you're considered uh, under arrest or detained. You're not free to go. And I'm a police officer. I have to read you your rights. Okay. I'm sure you've heard them on TV. You, uh, you know, I have to read them off this little card here, but they're pretty much the same. And I'll explain them to you as we go, okay? Let's see. This is July 15, 2008, correct? Mm, yes. Let me see what time it is here. It's 10.01. Good morning. Good 
This is case number 2008-161-0844. Okay. You do have the right to remain silent. Okay. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to questioning and to be with you during questioning if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for you prior to questioning. Do you understand these rights? Yes. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is just ask you some questions, ask you what you've been doing, um, you know, certain dates, what you were up to. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you were traveling on some of these dates. I traveled. I want to kind of clarify some of these things. And, uh, you know, if, if there's a question that you don't want to answer, you don't feel comfortable, you can say no, you know. And, or, you know, you can elaborate as much as you want. It, it's completely up to you. It's at your speed. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pressure Is you. Is this recorded at all, or um, should we? I, I, don't, I, don't, I know don't know if there's a recording or anything. I don't know if these are voice recorders. I noticed them. If they have video, they have audio or they're... batteries or what? I don't think they're on. Sorry, I'm really cold. It's okay. Used to the heat still. Yeah, I haven't touched those or anything, but... Uh, oh, okay. Um, I mean, they're not on, so... What I want to do is just get to the bottom of it. Everybody wants to know, okay? And, you know, so I'm going to ask you some questions. You can voluntarily answer them if you want, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Yeah, that's yes. fine. There was some question about you being, um, well, let's, let's start with this. What have you been up to since, um, since Travis's death, what, what have you been doing? Um, well, I've been working. Mm -hmm. I haven't been really working in prepaid legal. There's not a whole lot um, here in this marketplace, which is... It's kind of small here. It's small here, and really that, sh that could be seen as an opportunity yeah. um, rather than um, a hindrance, because that just means the market is, is untapped in a larger way. So I could have if I wanted to, but... I have, I'm kind of like a deer in the headlights when it comes to prepaid legal, and I kind of, I just have a fear of just approaching people. Um, so I've been working at a Mexican restaurant in the north end of town. Um, I've been, I've been kind of in a daze, at least for the first few weeks. Um, like everybody, you know. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of people have been posting on Facebook really nice things, you know, and memories, and at one point I was like, well, maybe I should do that, so I posted this thing, and I just said all my memories, and I realized looking back on it that it was kind of, it kind of sounded immature, it's more of like my dear Travis kind of letter, and so I took it down, because... More personal. Yeah, some of it was details, <coughs> but more personal, not too personal, nothing inappropriate, just, um, I just felt funny. I think because I'm a photographer, I tend to communicate more through pictures, so I posted a ton of pictures that I had of him, um, and I have a ton more that I just can't access right now, and videos and things that I know his family would want, but, um, so I posted pictures and I took that down, and I posted something last week, but other than that, I've been on Facebook and MySpace a lot, looking at his profile, looking at his pictures, reading things um, about his obituaries and um, any news updates and, you know, there's Legacy.com where you can write something about yeah, him. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of those postings. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize until I actually spoke with Ryan Burns, he, he told the guy that's in Utah. Uh -huh. And we've been talking a lot and we try not to talk about that because it's kind of like, ugh. And plus, Travis is my ex-boyfriend, but at the same time, he's my friend. So while I'm mourning my friend, how do you talk to your new potential, possible, maybe, person that you might start dating about your friend, even though he was your ex-boyfriend? So it's kind of a gray area. I try not to talk about him too much, but he comes up a lot. Um, and it was through him that I learned that he said, you know, if you come out to Utah, things are really weird because everyone, everyone thinks that you yeah. could have had a, um, a hand And I've this. talked to a lot of people, and... Everybody's pointing a finger at you. I know. You know, everybody is saying, I don't understand what happened to Travis. I don't know who killed him. 
but you need to look at Jody. And sometimes the simplest answers are the correct ones. And that's one of the reasons I started looking at you a little bit closer. And over the last month or so, I, I, I've gotten into Travis's life, talked to all his friends, his family. I got a really good understanding of who he is now. And I got a, a very good understanding of your relationship with him. And I'm kind of just putting two and two together. Well, I and, think and it, it kind of matches. So one of the reasons I'm here is to talk to you to figure out what was going on between you two. What, I know the relationship that you guys had was of convenience sometimes. Obviously, you weren't boyfriend and girlfriend anymore, mm -hmm. but you were still having a sexual relationship, which, Does his you know, family know about that? Just curious. No, just his curious. family doesn't know anything. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm interested in protecting his, mm -hmm. how he's remembered as well, and, you know, he's, he was very, he was, um... Well, I'm sure if Travis could speak right now, he wouldn't care what people thought about him, because they knew who he was, okay? And, a sexual relationship here or there, because of the fact he was a member of the church, it really doesn't matter. In a the, couple in, times in I asked him. a whole range of, of things. Yeah. Okay. I think in the broad scope of things that that could be right. I just think that the reason I care about that is because he was adamant about that. And a couple times we prayed about it, didn't work, or we didn't stick to our, you know, our guns on it. And um, one time a girlfriend of mine just said, why don't you just go to your bishop and talk and, and ask Travis the same. And I talked to him about it and he got really angry. He said, I've already had problems with this in the past. I'm embarrassed by it. I don't want to go to my bishop. And so we just kind of stopped for like a few weeks and then... That must have been in, I think it was August, and then it just resumed. Well, the, the way Travis thought by, you know, getting into his head and everything that he's written in his journals and um, everything I found out about him, he, he truly had feelings for you. And for some reason, he felt that the relationship between you and him was somewhat unhealthy, but he couldn't stop it. And I assume that's probably maybe the same way you felt about him, or it's probably, maybe you didn't understand why he didn't believe it was healthy. No, I, I didn't think it was healthy either, spiritually at least, and probably emotionally, but mostly spiritually. And I think that kind of, once you have something that's not healthy spiritually, it filters through all aspects of your life. Um, it's it's one of the main, it's one, like there were three main reasons I moved back to Erika, and one was I was in financial dire straits. Um, I was not getting ahead, it was not, I just, things were not working. Everything in Arizona was like, except for the wonderful friends that I made in my ward um, and the opportunity, it's like the Mormon land of opportunity there, which is awesome, but except for all that, like every sign was pointing, just to, just go, you know. You know, I wasn't able to hold a job and that had never happened before. Um, it, you know, it, too much of my, my nightlife can, was, was about him, you know. He would text me and, hey, I'm getting sleepy, dot, dot, dot. And just a bunch of Z's, and that was his code to like come on over kind of thing. It's, it, the coast is clear, you know. So, um, you know, and that was just, I lived five minutes away, 10, maybe 10, depending, and it was just too convenient and too easy, and it was fun, and we had fun when we were together. And so it wasn't healthy, and I totally agree with that. Um, so that was one of the reasons. Well, financially, I wasn't doing well. I missed my family. I moved away um, shortly after high school, and I come back to visit, but I realize over the years I've missed out on a lot of things. My little brother and sister I missed out on just uh, their karate or their baseball or cheerleading or just whatever. And, um, and my dad is not doing well. He doesn't think he has very long to live, but he always says that in that way for like a decade. He's still here, thank goodness. Um, my grandparents aren't getting any younger and I just have an awesome family. And I wanted to be able to just be here for a little bit and regroup um, financially. I owe my parents a lot of money and I owe my grandparents a lot of money and I owe friends money. I owe, I owe my, um, the guy that I bought a house with, I owe him a lot of money. He doesn't ask me for it, but I intend to pay him back because he really 
footed the bill on the mortgage for a few months. Um, and the third reason, and I like to put this third because I like to think that second of those reasons I would have been strong enough somehow, but the third reason was to put a distance, a physical distance between Travis and I because I know that he really liked Mimi and he said he did. Um, he just, and I kind of felt guilty. I mean, I know they weren't dating, but I just felt guilty somehow and I didn't know Ryan at the time. I met him in, in March at, um, in Oklahoma City, and it was just brief, and I remember seeing him and saying, oh, I really want to go say hi to him, but he was surrounded by people, and it was, he was kind of unapproachable, um, and he says he remembers meeting me, too, and it wasn't until Zion, my friend, um, texted me, and you know, I think I told you that. I was and this is all after this is all after. broke up. Oh, yeah. Broke up with Travis, everything was all over. I'm, yeah, for part of the timeline, we broke, I, well, it was kind of a mutual thing, but I, I sort of more broke up with him. Yeah. Um, and I, it was hard to do because I really loved him. But I just realized that without trust, you can't have anything, and I had violated his is that, trust. Is that the main reason you guys broke up, is the trust? Trust. I think that there's not, no... Not that the relationship was unhealthy because of the uh, you know, sexual activity, um, duty, but just that you guys couldn't trust each other. I think that, and this doesn't make it right, I think that, you know, being a convert, you know, I've had, I've, I've been, I've had a couple of serious relationships before where I was, where I was intimate with a few people. And it's kind of silly, but I used to always joke that um, regardless of what the Bible says, and yes, I'm Christian, I just live my life by the Ten Commandments, and that's my, those are my rules, da 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 you know thou shalt not this or that, but it doesn't say thou shalt not mortgage. So I just, I just used to joke about that. And that's, it's a bad philosophy. Um, I think that with Travis, um, there was part, there was a part of me that felt really guilty because there was something inside that thought, you're, you're, you know, this is nice for instant gratification, but you're destroying what you could have with Travis. And that's why we, we did pray about it. I remember we knelt by his bed once and, um, and, Surprisingly, he suggested it. Normally, you know, we would I would suggest that we pray before we go on a trip or yeah. before we eat, if we're alone. It was kind of unusual for him. Huh? Yeah, because he was very resistant to prayer with me. I mean, I think in church it would have been fine, and I feel that maybe because we, we were driving away the Spirit constantly. Um, or maybe he felt that by inviting the Spirit, we, he would feel guilty about later on in the evening, or I don't know what the deal was. Or the excuse he used was because I'm a convert, I need more practice saying prayers. He's like, so I'd say, will you say a prayer? He's like, why don't you say a prayer? Um, why don't you say a prayer? Why don't you say a prayer? So we'd go back and forth, and I don't know, until, I don't know, it was just one time when I was on a trip at Havasu Pie, we were all getting on the road, and I think Dan, it was with Dan Freeman and his sister Desiree, and they were all like, um, Jody, will you say a prayer? And I said, sure, and, and Travis was like, <laughs> Anyway, I, I didn't want to argue with men. So, um, anyway, what was I saying? Well, he's, um, you know, the whole trust issue keeps coming back into my mind. That was um, the big he, reason. He was, a, he was a big time flirt, and that's the one thing everybody says about him. He flirts a lot. Um, does he mean anything by it? No, not really. That's just who he is. Um, he did have, you know, girlfriends here or there, and he was at a point in his life where he wanted to really start settling down. He felt like he needed to kind of grow up, mm -hmm. you know, become a husband, become a father. You know, those that time had come, and he felt that that time had come and gone, and he was falling behind. He told me that too. He said he felt um, like his time was running out, and I, I told him that, you know, despite the fact that he's not going to be in a singles ward very much longer, he still has a lot of options. He's still a very eligible bachelor. And he, he just didn't see it that way. He was like, you don't understand. He was like, that might be true, but my chances are severely reduced once I turn 31. It was like this ticking well, time bomb. finding a, a good Mormon girl, you know, was, was difficult because you know, in that church, you know, that most of the girls get married in the early 20s. Yeah. You know. He said he didn't want to marry a girl in her early 20s because he said that he noticed a lot of pattern in the church with girls that married between 19 and 24, so to speak, would, 
would, you know, they'd start having babies and, and growing their family, and um, then they would look at their single girlfriends who were still having fun with no responsibilities, and they would regret getting married. And I think if you're strong in the church, it's not yeah. so much a problem, but... Yeah, it depends on who you surround yourself with, too. If you surround yourself with the right people, you know, it's a different story. But, you know, that's where he was. And did you guys ever discuss possibly getting married or anything? Is when we were dating. We did. Okay. Once we broke up, he brought it up. He actually proposed to me a lot of times, but he wasn't serious. Um, I think he was he was serious once, and it was when we broke up. And um, that was really hard because we were on the phone, and it was just it, like none of that stuff should be done on the phone anyway. But I was hundreds of miles away, and um, I told him that I loved him. We didn't say I love you during our relationship, but we said it afterward. It was weird. Okay. Um, I, uh, um, I said, you know, this isn't, breaking up with him on the phone wasn't really the way I wanted to do it, but it was kind of a situation that had just come to a, a point where it just couldn't be ignored anymore. And well, let's move to after the breakup. Oh, okay. What, uh, what kept you in Mesa at that point? I actually moved to Mesa a few weeks after we broke up. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, as far as the timeline goes. But, I mean, if you want to call it our official breakup, shortly thereafter, it's like we were still seeing each other. So you guys were seeing each other, but it was a long distance type relationship. It was always long distance when we were officially dating. We didn't re date, we dated from about the beginning of February to about the end of June. So, okay. February, March, April, May, June, about five months total. Okay. In June of 2007, you guys broke up, and, and then June you moved 29. to Mesa. Um, yeah, I moved to Mesa, sort of. Most people, weeks. when they break up, they kind of go their I know, own way. and it was, and we, the plans were already in order for me to move there. Um, I was already speaking with a friend who was, you know, was going to be her roommate, and I was her roommate for a short time. Mm -hmm. um, she's kind of flighty. She's a great girl, though. Um, I had talked to Travis about maybe going to Southern California instead. Okay. And he's really, he's he's really persuasive. He persuaded you to stay there in Mesa. He's he kind of was playing up all the advantages if I did come to Mesa, mm -hmm. and if I did, you know. Um, he said, you know, it's, it's, it's a great place. We could still see each other and hang out on occasion. Um, this church is very strong. You know, you'll, you'll make a lot of friends. And I already knew all this stuff prior because I we talked about that. Um, you know, and so I went ahead and just made the move. It sounded at the time like a good idea. And you guys continued to kind of see each other at that time? Yeah, at the time I was sort of living more across town over by Greenfield. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Uh, it was up Greenfield near Broadway. Greenfield and Broadway were the nearest cross streets. And that's where the girl that I was originally talking with, we, I moved in with her. Yeah, it's kind of far from Yeah. Travels, yeah. Um, the thing about her, and, and just to give you a background of why I moved suddenly, um, she approached me the weekend after I got there and said, hey, she knocked on my door, can I talk to you for a second? I said, sure. And she moved in with her boyfriend, um, and they were engaged. Okay. And she said, hey, I just wanted to let you know that Scott and I went to Vegas last weekend to tie the knot. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, we haven't told anyone, but we didn't want to live in sin. So we're gonna, and she had already been sealed in the temple once and was waiting for her cancel. Her, yeah. her, to, her you know, sealing to be Yeah, to be canceled. So they were going to have a civil wedding um, on the beach in Oregon. And they did that the following, uh, the following weekend. And she told me that on a Monday or Tuesday. It was the beginning of the week. And she said, the reason I'm telling you that is because I'm getting married this weekend and I have to go out of town a few days ahead of Scott, you know, to make arrangements. And now that he's a married man, we don't feel it's right that you be here in the house. Yeah. She said, I don't want to inconvenience you, but is there any way you could stay with somebody else or just find another place? At the time, I was waiting on a house in Gilbert because I already knew they were getting married, so I was kind of looking anyway. And there was a great girl named Brenda. And she was waiting on her keys for the mortgage to go through. And it was a great ward. It was a great house. And it was brand new. Um, construction and all that. It was really nice. Um, but she didn't get her keys for months and months. I think she's in the house now, but I don't know. I haven't talked to her. Um, so I scrambled 
I went to the Institute, I wrote down a bunch of phone numbers, I called them all, a lot of them, I got voicemails. Um, one girl that answered, her name was Tiffany, and she knew Travis, and she was at his services in Arizona and, um, as well. And we've just remained friends, sort of, like on MySpace and Facebook and that kind of thing. But she said, hey, sorry, that's an outdated posting. I forgot to take it down, but go to this website. So LDSHousing.net, I went there. I made three phone calls um, for the places that were within my price range. I didn't think to look where they were. Um, the one girl that called me back, her name was Shannon Derricott. She said, yeah. here's my place, here's the directions. Go ahead and go out and come see the house. It was available, so we did. Oh, go ahead. You have to get that? No. Okay. Um, so I moved out there, and when Travis found out it was so close to him, he freaked out about it. And I made sure to check that it wasn't, that that we wouldn't be in the same ward. And it was within his ward boundaries, but it was also within another single's ward boundaries. So of course I'm gonna go the other one, because it would just be kind of weird. I mean, I didn't know about him and Lisa at first. Uh -huh. So I, I don't know if they were even dating at that time. I don't know what their whole timeline was. Um, but it still would have been weird. And it wouldn't have made Travis now, very During that time that he was seeing Lisa, did you continue to, to see him as well? Yeah, and I didn't know that he was seeing her. Uh, but know. he would call you and have you come over. Yeah. I know there was a time when you, I guess, were cleaning his house too for, for extra money or something. Yeah, I did he that. He hired you. Yeah, I did that because um, he knew that I was struggling and he, he's like, I've been doing the math and that happened pretty much right on. I mean, that started, that started in August. He's like, I've done the math and I feel that I can be more protective. Um, my time is more valuable than X amount of dollars per hour. So why don't I pay you this per hour and I'll work and you can make a little bit of money. So that helps. That makes sense. Was and that was around the same time, time frame as uh, the move and back and forth? It was like a few weeks after the move. Okay. I was still living in, with Rachel, okay. over on Greenfield. Okay. Okay. Before, when that started. And he sent me this picture and he's like, this is your uniform, have it by Friday or Thursday or whatever. And it was this French paint thing. I was like, <laughs> no. Yeah, that's him, typical. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, he's, he's a very flirty guy. And, uh, he is.